Hey Pittsburgh, Josh Miller here with A Day in a Life. Today we're hanging out with Ralph Singers. He's been kind enough to let us in on what he sees day to day. And this is the view that he sees day to day. You're going to find out exactly what makes him tick. He graduated from Pitt. He was one of the best agents in the game of the NFL. He played in the NFL. And he's a trailblazer. He's doing a lot of great things. And stay tuned with A Day in a Life with Ralph Singers. have seen it all. Most right. people stop after they get a scholarship to play football. And then if you play in the NFL, they stop there. And then if they're a lawyer, they stop there. But you just keep going, you keep going, and you're... you're well, thank you. I, I love the fact that you, you're you a trailblazer. I mean, a lot thank a you. lot of your pieces, you're kind of a one of a kind that really won't... If you, if you see something that you don't agree with, that you think, I'm going to make a stink out of it, let the world know about it. I find that a lot of people, I wish more people did that. I come from a Vela, you know, coal mining town uh, where everybody, if you, if you wanted, wanted to go anywhere, do anything, you had, you had to play football. And I had great coaches. I had the best of the best growing up. Uh, my little league coaches, uh, they, they were like family. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, there was uh, uh, another coach, Mario Gabrielli, Abby Rush, but Mario was a war veteran. And everything, do the right thing. It was always do the right thing. Don't ever lie. Don't cheat. Do the right thing. When did you know you wanted to be an agent and represent these guys? And was it out of the fact that, you know what, I'm going to make sure they have everything that's coming to them because maybe this is all their eggs in a basket? You know, first off, I always represented champions. Mm -hmm. I mean, and the guys I were around in the locker room were champions. They're in the Hall of Fame. Alvin Bethay, uh, uh, Curly Culp, uh, guys who went by Bubba Smith and whatever. So I... I knew what leaders were about, what champions were about, but the, and, and those were the type of guys that I wanted to represent and did represent. A good friend at the time lived up in Newcastle, gave me a call and said, you know, Tom's from Newcastle and he's getting jobbed here with the Steelers. Hmm. He, he got cut, but he broke his thumb. Well, he broke his thumb in a quote unquote illegal practice. It was a practice with pads. You weren't allowed to have right. pads at the time. But at that time, Steelers, uh, particularly Buff Boston, I mean, you know, Buff didn't move. You know, if he shifted, it was because he had gas. I mean, he just didn't move on anything. Uh, and, and we couldn't get a settlement. Uh, and and I, went to, I went to war publicly, and, you know, and, and the NFL knew about the violation. John Clayton was really the responsible party. Vito Stellino was the other guy. Uh, and uh, bottom line is it cost him a third-round draft choice. Everyone in the Steelers is just totally miffed at me. Uh, and I go in. Uh, the Get my check. I don't care. You know, you got, and they were bad mouthing me in the back. You know, some of the people in the back. Right. And I wanted to fight. I go in, and I got to, but I go in there and I, I announce my name in, as loud as I can. And it's only a couple of years from from playing ball and wrestling. And I figured, right. you know, wrestlers are all knuckleheads. I mean, you know, they'll throw down with you. <laughs> and uh, all I wanted was my check. I announced loudly, and she left. She came back in, gave me the check. She says the chief would like to see you. I said, oh. Anybody but the chief. I want <laughs> right. to fight. I just wanted. Yeah. So I started to go for the door, and said, "Hit me." You know, AJ, my dad taught me better, and and uh, I said, "You know, I was thinking I might go to hell if I leave the chief." You know what I mean? <laughs> I go back in there, and it's just like in 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 the play that you saw. He's sitting in the back. Uh, my my friend Gene Collier wrote, uh, "Help write with another," mm -hmm. and uh, he was there, and he started to get up and all that, and we sit down, and he's making all good talk you know he's remembering Pitt and this and that and uh, his driver was a uh, Sports Illustrated street fighter Joey Divin uh -huh. and Joey Divin saved my butt up at Pitt a time or two well, don't want to get into that uh, and finally get to a point where I say uh, you know Mr. Rooney I'm, 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 I'm sorry about what happened there uh, about costing your third round draft choice and he puts it down, I'm waiting there, and he got these big, thick Coke bottle glasses. He said, let me ask you, when you were doing what you were doing, do you think it was the right thing to do? In my mind, wait, what? no time to be a smart ass. And I'm, I'm listening to his question. Right. And I said, 
well, yes, sir, I, I did. I thought it was the right thing. He said, that's all counts. I called you in here because, and at that time, Art was not, he was a lawyer. Art was a strict lawyer, and I don't think he wanted to be involved in football. But there was a strike going on. I'd always uh, have Art involved on TV or whatever else, and it was no cheap shots or whatever. And he brought that up and said a little bit more that was mm -hmm. uh, very nice. And from my perspective, I didn't care what, what anybody at the Steelers thought. I had the I had, had the, the old chief. man. Yeah, right I on. had the old. Man. And when he died, uh, all the dignitaries were there, and there were limousines parked outside, and then masses of homeless people crying, just bawling, because he'd give he'd give money to everybody. And, right. and but I was way in the back. I wasn't welcomed there except for one guy, and and mm -hmm. and he was inside. What I've tried to do is to make it all about champions. Uh, and and if you start, and I'll go from the back. Uh, uh, Nick Toon, who was the son of Al Toon, Al Toon was my client, Jeff Saturday, James Ferrier, Bob Ursay. Mm -hmm. Bob Ursay was just one mean SOB. Uh, I got drunk with him, and you never drink with Bob Ursay. And we, <laughs> we got a deal that was a monster deal. I don't think anybody ever tried drinking with him, and the word was, get out of there before noon. Because he starts drinking at noon, and he's one mean SOB. His mother called him the devil. <laughs> so when going through, so Trev Alberts, Mark Stepnoski, Steve Bono, Bill Polian, John Offerdahl, Tim Ruddy, uh, NFL versus Sindrich. Uh, sorry about that. No, no. Uh, Wolfert. Uh, Wolford was the Blindside contract. I mean, uh -huh. You remember Blindside? Yeah, of course. Okay. Well, that was. Uh, that's why they all wanted, one of the reasons why they all wanted to come after me. The blind side screwed up their whole system. You know, it was one of the, what they did is put a transitional tag on Will Wolford up at Buffalo, which means they had a right to match. Mm -hmm. uh, and Will would be paid one of the, uh, an average of the 10 highest paid players. Well, with Indianapolis, I wanted to get them out of the bills at that time because Polian was leading and uh, leaving. Indianapolis didn't have a high paid quarterback or a high paid running back. So I said, let's make him the highest paid player. At Buffalo, all times, though. Pardon me? At all times. They couldn't at all times. At all times. No matter who you signed. No matter who you brought, brought, brought in. It was the more. dumbest contract in the world for, for, for the team. <laughs> and, and Buffalo had Jim Kelly, uh, and they had uh, Thurman Thomas, and they had the rest of the guy, Bruce Smith right. and all the rest of them. Uh, caused a little bit of heartburn with the NFL. Right. But, uh, but it was one of the reasons why later on mm -hmm. they were so fond of getting together with me in courtrooms and in other places. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Why can't the NFL anymore give contracts and pay that over years? Why do these have to give these guys who probably don't know really what to do with it all that money up front when you can really distribute over 15, 20 years if that's enough? Why don't they do that? Why, they used to at one point do that. be able to do that. Why not anymore? Threw off their caps so, so much with, with uh, the dollars. We used to, I used to have a ruler that would have the present value of dollars, so you could very well go into the future like that. Uh, one of the stories that I have is Bill Freilich. Mm -hmm. Bill Freilich Jr., uh, second pick in the draft. Uh, he got uh, a, a landmark contract at the time. Bruno San Martino helped me on that one. Uh, and it basically, it, it pays him $150,000 a year for the rest of his life, and this was signed in 1985, minimum to his estate of $6 million, mm -hmm. and it was called a rabbi trust. Well, they don't let that anymore. That, I don't know how. I got Tom Bratz and I, the GM, uh, we went out fishing. I knew he liked to drink beer. I had a case or two of beer, Iron City. Uh, we started drinking, you know, lines, you know, caught, caught the fish, but that's where we worked out that deal at yeah. that time. And, and uh, right after that, the NFL shut it down. So you know, you'll never see a rabbi trust again. I just think in today's day, that would probably help out a lot of athletes. Stay tuned for A Day in the Life with Josh Miller. A Day in the Life is brought to you by UPMZ, life-changing medicine. Nakama Japanese Steakhouse. You've tried the rest, now try the best. Rivertown Brewing, delivering you the most enjoyable craft beer experience. Athlete Originals, original apparel designs by athletes for their fans. We'll be right back. I have a different outlook on life because it could have been all taken away from me. I came home from college and my mom said it didn't look right. I just thought I had a common cold. I was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma. 
It was like a shock to all of us. UPMC took excellent care of me and got me to where I am today. And I'm here, three years in remission. I didn't choose to have cancer, but I did choose UPMC. Don't spend your time bottled up. Pack up and go. And no matter where you go, bring Rivertown along. Whether you enjoy our smooth Maxwell Scottish Ale or our refreshing Halikahiki Pineapple Ale, our advanced technology canning process ensures that Rivertown craft beers taste just as fresh and flavorful no matter where you go. Tailgating with friends or cheering on your hometown team at the ballpark. No matter where you go, enjoy ice-cold Rivertown craft beers. Visit our brewery and take a tour. Every day is bursted with flavor at Selma's Texas Barbecue. Southern style served right. Like Selma's slow-cooked dry ribs smothered with your choice of six flavorful sauces. Or Selma's Wrangler sandwiches like pulled pork, Alabama pulled chicken, turkey grass, beef brisket, and fish. Plus daily specials like our pork stuffed baked potato, half chicken, and farm-raised catfish. Grab group packs or catering for your upcoming shindig. Selma's Texas Barbecue. The real stuff. University Boulevard, Moon Township, or visit selmasbbq.com. With 11 grams of fiber and 7 grams of protein, All Natural Barn Dad's Fiber DX manages hunger and a healthy digestive system for proper weight management. Baking with Barn Dad's assures a 44% of daily recommended fiber. Barn Dad's German Chocolate Shake is a fun way for the whole family to enjoy a rich diet in essential fiber and protein. Look for Barn Dad's Fiber DX in the dietary section at GNC, Vitamin Shop, Walgreens, Giant Eagle, and at BarnDadsFiberDX.com. Rich from Locust Grove Country Shop hiding from suppliers and chain stores. When they find out about this year's discount prices on our name brand merchandise, I don't know what they'll do. We're not supposed to tell you we have discount prices on all our Under Armour. They don't want me to tell you that we have discount prices on all our name brand boots like Red Wing, Golden Retriever, Irish Setter, Carolina, and Wolverine. But why pay more? Your name brand merchandise discount store. Go to Locust Grove Country Shop. Why pay more? every occasion with a festive bouquet from Cookies by Design. They taste as good as they look. Welcome back to A Day in the Life with Josh Miller. If you had a, if it was written in pencil and you had an eraser and then you could fill it in with ink, what are you changing? What just, what just makes you sick? Boy, I mean the hypocrisy of it all. I mean just that, that, uh, so many out there still believe, are so ignorant fans of really what goes on, uh, and, and maybe don't care, mm -hmm. uh, but it's grossly unfair. You know, nobody likes agents. Uh, my wife likes an agent, you know, but nobody really, you know what I'm saying? Right. And so who cares about this group here if they're getting unfairly treated? Uh, but beyond that, it is just it, it's a prostitution of the guys that are coming in also. It's, it's only for football ability. Academics have nothing to do with it. Some of the slimy stuff that goes on uh, borders prostitution. If you have mm -hmm. young girls that are, that are uh, waiting there to service your recruits who are coming right. in, what else is it? Uh, I mean, and was I a part of that? I can't recall. <laughs> no, I was recruited hard, and, and you know, but you always had that from certain schools. But but I know at my school uh, we had a principal, Ray Ferroni, who was a former coach, and he made sure anybody that came in there was just on the up and up. And you have a lot of that with these younger guys, where they'll come in and you'll say, "How can they be so stupid?" Or you can feel the slime. You know, if I if I if I shake hands with Drew Rosenhaus, I feel it. You know, right. uh, and, and I didn't, I won't. But but uh, and and you know. Some of the things that I say uh, could be termed mean or whatever else, uh, and maybe actionable, libelous. Uh, but truth's uh, an affirmative defense. Right. Uh, and a lot of times, for for those individuals, for for certain people, I look to pick a fight if I can, mm -hmm. if I can get them into into a, uh, a surroundings to where you're under oath, where you have to say the 
the absolute truth, no matter what. I don't know if you remember a guy by the name of Kent Hall. Mm -hmm. uh, Kent was just a solid guy. First agent screwed him, and, and uh, w close friends with Will Wolford, but uh, several time Pro Bowl uh, player. But uh, he died from taking too many pills to kill pain. I think that's the end result of it all. I mean, I don't know how, I don't know what the autopsy report said, but from, you know, when you're around players and you see them all together, uh, and two two things on that. One is Marv Levy, Bill Polian. Bill Polian, I, I fought him with every single guy, and we cried in each other's arms. Uh, and and so you have that love for the player, you know, that you develop. You see what he's gone through, what he's done, and then you look, you know, with your family uh, and how everyone, you know, how, hold this guy up, uh, you know, way up here, and, and the basis of it, too, with these guys. Yeah. They're just good people. They're good, they're good parents. They're, they're good citizens. They're good husbands. Right. Uh, and uh, uh, it's one of the things that now, in, in reflection, you know, coming back, uh, it's just I, every night. I mean, I'm, I'm just, you know, the feeling that I have about being involved with the NFL and football is the good feeling is, is the result of all these guys. Is there a top five things that you look at and say, you know what, I am very proud I did that, I was part of that? No, I mean, my family, I'm most proud of my family. Uh, and I know everybody says that in a way, but I'm, 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 my brother, my brother Bob was U.S. attorney for the Western District of Pennsylvania, a federal judge, head mm -hmm. guy with the uh, University of Pittsburgh Medical Center. My brother Ron, just a tremendously successful businessman, uh, uh, who who uh, now is going down to Naples, but has a it's just very well off, has done very well. Uh, I'm going, you know, I didn't grow up in the streets, but I learned from going even the pit from the Greek club. Uh, after, after wrestling season, and I, w I was fourth in the nation, heavyweight, unlimited. It was unlimited. Uh, Eastern champ. I was pretty much a badass. Mm -hmm. I, in the bar over inside, not bothering anybody. Just over, and I'm enjoying the hell out of myself. Just, I look up at a guy, and he looks at me, and I catch his eye, and he catches my eye, you know. This next isn't thing gonna I end know, well, you're thinking, huh? You're thinking this isn't gonna end well for him. Well, yeah, but next thing I know, he just got out of prison. He's standing right beside me, and I just turn, boom, and I go down from a stool, uh, maybe about this much higher, mm -hmm. and I get up. It knocked me out now, but I get up, you know, and I'm grappling that way. But they don't break it up. I'm not seeing too clearly. We have hands on each other. Matter of seconds before I, I make him pass out. You know, I mean, now that's the mentality at the time. You know, right. short arm drive, boom, boom, that's it. In, yeah. we did that in practice thousands of times to a point where you'd, a guy would pass out, you go, oh, you know, and, uh -huh. but you'd always practice that. You right. know? So it gave you a sense of, of uh, self worth or strength that maybe really wasn't there because, you know, you know sports is different from being out on the, you mm -hmm. know, out on the street. Stay tuned for a day in the life with Josh Miller. A Day in the Life is brought to you by UPMC, life-changing medicine. Nakama Japanese Steakhouse. You've tried the rest, now try the best. Rivertown Brewing, delivering you the most enjoyable craft beer experience. Athlete Originals, original apparel designs by athletes for their fans. We'll be right back. Roller derby is not a sport for the faint of heart. I've fractured my foot, sprained my tailbone, torn both my ACLs, and fractured my kneecap. Yeah, who breaks their kneecap? When I got injured, I wanted to go to where the pro athletes go, so I went to UPMC. The doctors I know and trust have been there to get me back doing all the crazy things I love to do. I didn't choose to blow out my knees, but I did choose UPMC. Don't spend your time bottled up. Pack up and go. And no matter where you go, bring Rivertown along. Whether you enjoy our smooth Maxwell Scottish Ale or our refreshing Halikahiki Pineapple Ale, our advanced technology canning process ensures that Rivertown craft beers taste just as fresh and flavorful no matter where you go. Tailgating with friends or cheering on your hometown team at the ballpark. No matter where you go, enjoy ice-cold Rivertown craft beers. Visit our brewery and take a tour. Despite years of tradition and a legendary family recipe, hey, Mom. one question still remains. You know, moms are making the sauce all day. 
Gravy. Sauce. Gravy. Ma! Ma. What? It's Bon Jovi! This ain't your mom's sauce. It's my dad's. Bon Jovi brand pasta sauces. Pasta sauces that rock. Morgan! 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 She's on Squeaky! She is? Ooh! Why social networking when you can be social networking? It all includes an online solution. Buy, sell, socialize, monetize, search. Squeaky.com Welcome back to A Day in the Life with Josh Miller. Ralph, what do you think about today's athlete? I'm kind of getting turned off. I feel every weekend come Monday rolls around, all you see on sports centers, all the trouble that these guys are getting into, whether it's gang fights, whether it's marijuana, or whatever the case may be, today's athlete seems to be, I don't know, on the decline. Whole thing. Well, I, I think you have to be. I mean, I, I, it's a lack, it's a lack of ethics and morals, and you see that, and you, and, and you know, you would, I'd want my kid to play uh, for the pit coach as mm -hmm. an example. I know him. I did a lot of guys from West, uh, Wisconsin, uh, but there are certain guys. I mean, you know, I mean, you have the Louisville coach here. You know, it was just in Arkansas. I mean, it was just a lying and a cheating and a, all the way around, and here he is back there, and. And people are going on TV and they're just saying these laudatory things about him, yeah. like like his background is that of a priest. You know, right. it's not close. And he, yet he is that second educator. Your son leaves. He is the educator that you're going to have at the University of uh, uh, whatever. Right. And for me, even at Pitt, I had guys, and you know, a lot of them were mentions all the way through my life. I had a mensch all the way through. Uh, at Pitt, it was Eddie Gellin. He was the guy who recruited me and all. And, and so it set the tone. Well, but Pitt wasn't doing all that well, wasn't paying all that much, and you know, mm -hmm. all the other stuff. So, and with me, that never came up. You know, it, but, but I would be extremely concerned you know, with yourself there. And there has to be a separation of it. I mean, I don't think we're to the point of when, when old uh, uh, Theodore Roosevelt separated, you know, too many injuries, right. all this other thing. But there has to be divisions in the leagues, and there's no doubt that, that some of the bigger ones playing for the bigger money, I mean, these are pros. Right. It's, 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 it's still nothing, in my view, that I enjoyed as much as NCAA competition. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I didn't do what I wanted to do in football. Wasn't a business yet, right? Wasn't a business. Uh, wrestling, you know, you know wrestling, you know. Mm -hmm. But it was, so when I look back, you know, and I always say, think NCAA, I, I, there's a soft spot and a love. And when I talk NCAA now, I want to see them in court. Right. You know, I, I, want, I, I want to go to the people at the top who, who, who set, put this all in place. And, and there was lying and scheming. And, and, and the fact of the matter is, there is a lot of big money. And where does the money go then? Does it go back to the university? Uh, you know, are these guys CEOs? Uh, how do you expect uh, uh, the Ohio State uh, president to, to reprimand his coach who's making 20 times more, 30 times more than he's making. I mean, right. the whole power structure is, is out of whack. And, and, but it's the public who wants, who's paying the yeah, bill. Yeah, that's true. You know, I mean, so you look at it, you almost say, well, look, if it's, why am I, why is this such a big problem with me? You know, why am I uh, creating a fuss? Nobody else is doing it. Ralph, does it make sense that Josh Gordon gets a year suspension for smoking marijuana and you have footage of Ray Rice and his then fiance getting knocked out in the elevator? A little odd to me. It doesn't, no rhyme or reason except with Josh Gordon, Fourth uh, of July, DUI, right. Memorial Day, stop in a car with someone smoking. I mean, and then you have all the other incidents. Mm -hmm. At some point, he's a liability to the NFL. He's a right. liability to the Shield, and I think he needs to know that. Uh, boy, what happened on on the other one? The the uh, NFL. Are you shocked by that? Now, granted, they came out. Roger Goodell came out. Not even a month later saying, oh, whoa, whoa. Next time, it's, it's instantly six games. Again, you're banned a second. So, I mean, he, I think he kind of regrets giving the two games. He got such a bad backlash. He did. That, you know what, okay, from now on, if you, any kind of, it comes down to that. And again, it happened with a guy from San Francisco, by the way, four days later. Which, yeah. I mean, okay. I mean how, how's a guy do that four days later? There's, there's nothing worse that could go. The only thing worse that this guy could do other than domestic abuse would be the joint ISIS. 
Right. I mean, there's nothing right. as bad as that right at this no. time. No, I mean, so he's instantly going to get six games, and then if he does it again, he's banned from the game. But, you know, and, and look, I have a daughter. I have, I mean, domestic abuse has no place. I understand mm-hmm. all that. There are a couple of issues, though. One is who determines really whether it was domestic I, Right. Understand. Unmistakable I, I with saying. rice. Right. right. Okay. But usually a court of law, usually mm-hmm. a court, it, somehow, at least you, get, you have to find factual evidence. You're not always going to have that. So if you have a girl that comes in beat up, and you know a lot of players are set up. How right. Many times, That's... How many times clients of mine have been set Not here. Right. It, it, it's just happened. Absolutely. Uh, and, and so if you see that happen, so all of a sudden the guy's charged. And you're going on a, a police report of of the uh, individual who who uh, was the spouse or yeah, uh, right. the product of the domestic abuse. You're looking at that and you're saying, "Well, uh, did it really happen that mm-hmm. way?" And all right. of it because you're taking away a guy's livelihood now. Right. You know, and that's one of the things with the social issues that, that are out there. I mean, you know, we all you. We all have to be aware of it. There's certain things that, that you're going to say out there publicly. It's going to leave a mark, you yeah. know, and you got to be willing, I think, either to stand up to it or not. There are certain cases that are indefensible, you know, and, mm-hmm. and, and I think you get into uh, the DUI part of it. I think it's indefensible now. Right. Uh, you get into uh, domestic abuse, it's always been indefensible. Any regrets looking back? No. That's pretty cool. No. I was... I mean, looking back, I don't, like, like I said, I'm, I'm humbled. I, the whole NFL thing, too. I'm not here. I'm not doing, I'm not doing what I'm doing now right. uh, without football. I mean, I don't get the education that I get. I, you know, I don't go on to law school. Put me through law school, bought me my first car. Did, uh, I mean, like, it's just, it would be hard. For, I, I'll go for the players and the clients and whatever that are really down and out and need it now. Uh, and I'm a part of, part of the lawsuit. I'll never be one to collect on it, mm-hmm. but I, I did it for the players. Right or wrong, some say it's not a good settlement for the players. Yeah, they need help now. The ones that call me need help now. The next things out of their mouths are going to be what? And what would you like that to be said? That <laughs> honest. Yeah. Tells you like it is, not afraid. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed today's show. Hanging out with Ralph Sinjus was an absolute blast. What an interesting guy he is. Graduate from Pitt, all American there, and then played in the NFL. And then what does he do next? Well, he represents the players, then goes to battle for him. Interesting guy, very thankful for him to let us spend some time with him. Hope you enjoyed yourself with a day in the life.